when I was a child, running in the night, I was afraid of what might be. Hiding in the dark and hiding on the streets. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're going to talk about uh, pistons and rings and some um, piston crown, ring groove, like so. Then you have a ring in it like this, and then you have your cylinder wall. And people were saying, yes, it only sits against your uh, base of your piston groove like this on the upstroke. Well, that's not entirely true, and that's not what's meant to happen. So as your piston is going up, so your piston is going up like this. Um, the ring is free floating, so it's basically sat there. Then the bottom of the ring groove goes uh, and takes it with it. So then this, uh, your piston ring accelerates like so upwards. But it's basically been shoved in the arse by the piston. Now, what's happening here is your uh, crankcase pressure is going slightly below atmospheric because you're basically creating a bigger volume. Even if you have fucking... Especially at high speed, even if you have crankcase breathers, your piston has a diameter of whatever, your crankcase breather has a, a smaller diameter, you cannot flow the air through there quick enough to completely recover. So this is below atmospheric. Up here, obviously, you're on your compression stroke. So the pressure in here, we'll just say if it's a 10 to 1, just for easy numbers, and we'll just say it's 15 PSI, let's just say it's 150 PSI up here. Right? So obviously there is pressure pushing against your um, ring. Now what people are saying is that when the piston gets to top dead centre, the ring lifts off because it has um, momentum. The piston is now stopping and then the ring will flow up. This is true, but what you're not paying attention to is the fact that you've got 150 PSI in here. So the pressure against the ring is still keeping that ring. This all depends about how much this ring weighs right thicker bigger rings will have uh, more inertia or resistance to change in velocity and if the weight of the ring and the speed that the piston is going the, the, as, a, as a system is greater than the pressure in the cylinder then yes it will overcome that but generally speaking and this is why um, we try and make rings as light as possible but then also make them <laughs> so they can survive what's going on um, your second compression ring does this more because the pressure that your second compression ring let's just put another ring in here like this well it's just the air gap in here which really isn't increasing so your compression ring tends to jump then you get a bang and then your piston your piston will go down so what happens then is then you think well the reverse happens obviously what happens is is that the ring groove let me just fucking draw that again what you'd expect to happen let's put a ring groove in there like so and your cylinder wall what you expect to happen is this where your ring it, your pistons on its way down and the ring just pass the ring stays still the piston goes down and clouts it in the ass and then this pressure of pushing the ring it can only push the ring here, it's not getting behind it and giving it a good shove. But that's not <laughs> that's not what should happen. This high pressure should keep the ring seated, and then all that's happening is, is the pressure's increasing up here because you've got combustion going on. You know, the temperature's going through the roof, which means that all the atoms bouncing around can apply more force to a surface area and killing pressure. Now, this movement up and down is what we call ring flutter your ring goes blah, 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 blah. it basically just it starts to whack in inside this groove backwards and forwards so the way we get rid of that is like i say is we try and remove ring flutter is a thing that was very common in the 70s and 80s and it can still happen now and a lot of the guys who do uh, v8 tuning can have this problem because they're overpowering the machines um, and not really changing much but this is why we want to go for a lighter ring as possible if we can go for a lighter ring as possible then the um inertia or the momentum whichever way you want to say it um the the inertia of this ring is lower which means that um it the, the pressure in your combustion chamber 
150 psi and then climbing up to about 4000 or whatever is enough to keep that ring seated so it's seated so the air can get round the back of it and the, the gases can get round the back of it and push it into the cylinder so yeah using lighter rings is um one of the ways that we can reduce flutter why would you want flutter well you get a lot of blow by you can also have the rings on seats also putting a lot of stress on the rings by bashing them around and all the rest it's something we don't really want but mainly you're losing your volumetric efficiency because your rings are going up and when they lift up they can be lifted out because nothing's pressing them out so the gases can easily creep around and push them out of the way and so on and so forth hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit